folks, welcome back to Thunder Mesa Studio. Today, I want to talk about one of the more technical aspects of the layout. Specifically, how I wire my turnouts for trouble-free operations. Throughout the layout, I use rugged and reliable Pico ON30 track and turnouts. Always have. But before we get too far along, I should probably define a few terms. The term frog on a railway turnout refers to this funny looking configuration of rails where the main and diverging lines meet. The stock rails are the outer rails on a turnout, the ones that are fixed in place and don't move. The points are the narrow inner rails that determine which route is selected when they are moved from one side to the other by the throw bar. And that's this thing right here. These Pico turnouts have what they call an electrofrog design, meaning that track power is routed through the frog depending on the position of the turnout points. This works because everything from the frog to the points is a variable circuit that acts like an electrical switch when the points are thrown drawing current from whichever the stock rails the points are in contact with, and changing the polarity of the frog to match. Since the polarity of the frog changes when the points are thrown, insulated rail joiners are needed to prevent a short circuit from diverging tracks where power is fed from above the frog. In this example, you can see just what I'm talking about. With the main route chosen, both the points and the frog are negative. When the diverging route is chosen, the points in the frog both become positive. A short circuit is prevented by having the rails properly gapped above the frog. Looking more closely at the points, we can see the small metal tabs that slide beneath the stock rails to make electrical contact and route power. While this feature works great out of the box, it tends to become much less reliable over time, especially once the track has been painted and ballasted. Paint and glue and just general gunk tend to build up on those little tabs, so when you go to throw the switch, this is what you often get. Yep, dead as a doornail. There are several ways to address this problem. One is to wire the frog to a double pole, double throw switch and use it to route power manually when the switch is thrown. Another is to use the connections on a switch machine like a tortoise to do the same thing remotely. Since I prefer to throw my turnouts by hand on the Thunder Mesa layout, I'm installing Tam Valley Depot frog juicers to automatically route power to the frog and reverse polarity when a train is detected. The frog juicer works by supplying power via electronic means rather than a mechanical switch. Drawing only 17 milliamps, it automatically detects a short circuit when a locomotive passes over and instantly reverses the polarity so the train can continue on its way. Pico ON30 turnouts require no modifications other than a wire soldered to the frog to connect to the frog juicer and insulating rail joiners or gaps on all rails above the frog. Note that the Thunder Mesa layout uses an NCE power cab system for DCC control. Check the Tam Valley Depot website for the compatibility of your system before installing. With a wire soldered to the frog, the rest of the installation is simple. The wire from the frog is connected to the center terminal, while the wires from the outer terminals connect to your main layout power bus. But what if the turnout you wish to connect has already been installed, painted, and ballasted, and you neglected to solder that little wire in place ahead of time? Well, in that case, a little retrofitting may be in order. Fortunately, it doesn't matter all that much which part of the frog you connect the wire to, so it can be soldered to a turnout that is already in place. But first, you'll need to dig out some of the ballast just like I'm doing here with a small screwdriver. Then, if there's paint in the spot where you need to solder, that's got to come off too. I removed paint from my rails with a wire wheel brush and a Dremel tool. A hole for the connecting wire was carefully drilled between the ties and down through the sub road bed using a 1 16th inch bit.
22 gauge wire was fed down through the hole and both the wire and the rail were tinned with solder. A little cleanup with an emery board, and then it's time to hook up the wires to the frog juicer. The green wire comes from the turnout frog, while the black and white wires are already connected to the DCC power bus. Double-sided foam tape is perfect for mounting the frog juicer to the benchwork, where all but the indicator light will later be hidden by a removable piece of scenery. Now it's time to power things back up and see if it all works. So far so good. Success! Now just a little touch up and this job is done. I want to thank Tam Valley Depot for making such a great product in the frog juice. That's going to do it for this time, amigos. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, adios for now.